If you have enjoyed the series, please hit the subscribe button. There's one in the corner of the video here now. It makes it real easy. We've also got our Facebook group that you can join for uh, questions. But, um, you know, subscribing and joining our Facebook group helps uh, build the community. And, I mean, we're looking for the new people who have questions. And we're also looking for the people who have experience to, that can help out. And uh, that way we build a strong community. So with that, off to our video we go. The slide, a demonstration of the latest solar powered shortwave receivers from GALCOM in Canada. A look at KNLX in Alaska, Madagascar World Voice, and much more. The cost for a private cabin on the 39 crews is $229, with $75 taxes per person in double occupancy. Let him Good day, and welcome back to Mike's Radio Repair and Restoration. We're going to move on with part four of our Halicrafters S76 restoration, and uh, we're basically going to be covering alignment and the final strokes for this radio. Um, last I left off, we were talking about installing, reinstalling the face panel after getting it cleaned up, and I hit one snag. Um, the radio came with a funny... I don't know where I put it now. A very strange BFO knob. It was not a, uh, a Halicrafter knob. And I noticed that the very small brass shaft that came out for the BFO was too short. Um, the set screw wouldn't grab the BFO shaft, and I found that to be very strange. Um, it was like the BFO uh, inductor control was turned in too far, and that raised question marks. Um, doing some investigation, and we'll go ahead and look at the schematic in a minute, um, I found that one of the silver mica capacitors that normally don't cause us grief was causing me grief. It had fallen to 440 picofarads down from 560, forcing the previous owner to turn the BFO control in further in order to get that 50 kilohertz injection point that he needed. So I simply took that one capacitor out and put a modern day replacement in. And sure enough, the BO sha BFO shaft turned out to the proper length where I could install the BFO knob. So that got dealt with. So here we are with uh, our BFO oscillator, which is uh, on V8, uh, which is the uh, 6SC7. Um, it's a split tube, so one half of it is being used as an audio amp, as a preamp, and the other half is being used as an oscillator to drive the BFO. And it's a standard Hartley oscillator, as I was mentioning. And you can see there's the arrow. It tells you that this inductor is adjustable. This is the front panel control for the BFO. And what had happened was is they had turned the slug in, because this capacitor here, the value of it had dropped to about 440. And this says MMF, which is uh, micro microfarads. Uh, we call them puff now for picofarads. Um, so it had dropped down quite a bit, um, which forced it to oscillate faster. So they had to tune the slug in further. That way you couldn't get a hold of it with the knob. So this is a uh, uh, kind of a rare instance where uh, a domino mica, silver mica capacitor has gone wrong. So I removed it and I put another silver mic in a modern day that was rated at 1600 volts and it was 560 puff or micro micro farads. And uh, sure enough, uh, my uh, control tune turned out where it should be that I could get a proper knob on it. I also checked this uh, C60 here, and uh, it was okay. Um, the O2 attached here had already been changed in the, in the recap, but these two guys here are, uh, are silver micas, and generally, as I said in my other videos, you don't bother with them unless they prove that they're causing a problem. But I just thought that was very interesting, because normally you don't get 
uh, silver mica failures. They're pretty, they do happen, but they're pretty rare. Um, the next big thing um, is I've made some discoveries in the alignment of this radio that aren't very well covered or covered poorly by the manufacturer. When you're aligning the 50 kilohertz section of this radio, um, let me just back up here. There are two or three different manuals out there for this radio, and they have you do different things um, for alignment of the 50 kilohertz uh, IF chain. Um, the first manual has you align it with the, uh, the bandwidth control set at normal, and the, uh, the IF transformers are very difficult to tune. They're very, I guess I'd call them soggy, and the bandwidth is very wide. Um, and the second manual has us turn the bandwidth control to sharp, which very narrows the pass band of the 50 kilohertz IF. And now the coils, the, the IF transformers become very sharp to tune. So that was not in, not in the first manual, but it was in the second manual. And I found it to be a good step up. You know, when I did, when we do the BFO here, or BFO, when we do the uh, 50, 50 kilohertz IF, we will set the bandwidth at five, which is very sharp so that we get a good tune. Now, another thing that was mentioned in the first one, but not in the second one, was removing the 1650 kilohertz oscillator tube, which is V3. So when you remove V3 and you're set up to align the 50 kilohertz um, IF, that's the only signal you're getting and you can get a good sharp tune. If you put the, the V3 or that oscillator tube back in, it induces more signal and it becomes not very clear. So between manual one and manual two, or there's some differences and you kind of sort of have to take the high road and understand that, yes, you need to set the control on sharp uh, as manual two says, and yes, as manual one says, you really need to pull V3 or that oscillator tube to do a proper job. So let's uh, let's uh, head into that right now. Let's take, well, we'll take a look at the schematic and we'll see what we're gonna do, and then we'll get right to it. So, if you notice on the schematic, it shows the two IFs, the 50 kilohertz and the 1650, and the 50 kilohertz is the one we're going to focus on first. Now, if you remember from our last video, um, the second oscillator that mixes 1650 down to 50 is located over here. I believe that says L16. This is the transformer, and it's adjustable. You can see the little arrow here. And it's denoted as A5, which tells you in the, in the alignment instructions how to uh, deal with that. Now, I found some discrepancies across a couple of different S76 manuals. The one we're looking at is uh, an early one. And I found a different alignment procedure um, in a later one, which is much more useful. But deviating from both of those instructions, I've opted to tune this coil differently than the manufacturer recommends, only because the equipment is better now. I can in inductively couple to this tube, uh, and this tube acts as an oscillator and a mixer and a bit of an amplifier all at the same time. And this is a 1600 kilohertz oscillator coil that's tunable. So when I inductively coupled my, coupled my poor man spectrum analyzer to that tube, I tuned this oscillator to exactly 1600 kilohertz, and that's where it will stay. As to where the manufacturer will have you feed in a, a, a signal and try to tune it for a peak. So I'm not opting to do that. I'm opting for precision rather than trying to attempt to tune for a peak. Now... The uh, also part of the 50 kilohertz alignment is A4, A3, A2, and A1. So we will be adjusting all of these transformers, or IF cans, if you will, for maximum throughput. Now, the discrepancy between the early manual and the later manual surrounds around the bandwidth control. With the early model, they just have you tune these 
for best output. And when I, I've kind of sort of roughly did that a little bit and played with it because I've noticed this big difference that these tuning, these co coils, these transformers are very mushy to tune. They're not very responsive. It's very difficult because they're so wide to find a peak. So what they have you do in the later manual is they'd have you tighten up the bandwidth control by tuning the bandwidth control to number five, which makes the bandwidth very narrow. And the pass band amongst those transformers becomes very sharp and it becomes much easier to tune. So from, for those of you, make sure that you're working from that um, manual that has you set the bandwidth control to five because it's going to make those coils sharper to tune, which we're about, we're about to do. We're going to do that in just a minute here. All right, this is the uh, 50 kilohertz alignment setup. We have a vacuum tube voltmeter connected to the AVC line, which is, they call it point A on the schematic. Uh, we have a signal generator set to 50 kilohertz with no modulation. Our signal generator is connected through a uh, 0.01 capacitor to uh, terminal 1 on transformer 7. So if you can remember the schematic we just went through, uh, we're going to be tuning A1 through A4, but not A5. A5, the manufacturer wanted us to peak it in this process. But instead, I've chose to use the poor man's spectrum analyzer as um, the alignment point and set it at exactly 1600 kilohertz, which is more accurate. So we're only going to tune A1 through an, an A4 in this process. So and we'll be tuning for a peak quite simply. So I'll begin. So I'm on A1 here. Our set has had a good hour to warm up. So there's some gain there. A1 is tuned. Some good gain on that one too. Switch to three. More. Three pulse. Okay, so I've gone through an initial tuning of A1 through A4. So we got some gain, which is going to make this hot receiver even better. Uh, but we're just going to go back through them again to make sure that we've re reached a good solid peak. Sometimes moving one affects the impedance of the other. Okay, that one's not getting any better. This is that's going to be. Okay. All right. So that concludes the 50 kilohertz IF alignment. Again, we have set A5, which is the oscillator coil, 1600 kilohertz oscillator coil with the poor man's spectrumizer, spectrum analyzer. So we're bang on with that. And uh, A1 and A through A4, through A4, we've picked up with our signal generator. The 1650 kilohertz alignment is just as easy as the 50 with your, your DC meter still clipped onto the AGC line. They have you inject a signal at the uh, tuning capacitor of 1650 kilohertz and of course it gets passed through the mixer tube and we have a 6, a 7, a 8 and a 9 which we tune for a peak. Now you'll notice there's two adjustments for each of these transformers. Even though they're one transformer can there's two adjustments. So there's one on the top of the chassis coming out of the top of the transformer can and there's one on the bottom side of the chassis. So 
they have to be tuned in that order as so far as the manufacturer recommends. So that's real, very simple to uh, tune up your, uh, your 1650 IF for best performance. So you can just very see that your 1600 signal passes through these filters and it heads into the, into the 50 megahertz converter mixer where 1600 kilohertz is injected and 50 kilohertz is the output. So you get one conversion here from your normal oscillator and you get a second one happening here and it scrapes up so much noise and crap and images. Um, it's a great, it's a great invention. So this is our 1650 kilohertz setup. We're using the same meter connected to the same point. Our signal generator is now set at 1650 kilohertz, just a sine wave, no audio tone, but we're connected to the center gang of the tuning capacitor. And we're going to be tuning a six, a seven and a eight. These are the 1650 kilohertz transformers. So again, we're going to be tuning for a peak. Now, A6 and A7 is one transformer. It has a, an adjustment on the top and an adjustment on the underside of the transformer so that each coil has two slugs in it. Same with the other A7 and A8 transformer. Um, one of the adjustments is on the top and the other is on the bottom. So we'll be working in that, pro in that fashion. We'll uh, do the top one first of a transformer and then do the bottom second. Oh, this one takes one. Ooh, there's quite a gain there. That's the top of one done. The bottom of that one. Okay. I need a game there. Last one. And there we go. Our 1650 kilohertz transformers, IF transformers, are aligned. This is the setup for the BFO. And we're back on L7 pin 1 of that transformer. That's where we're injecting that signal. We're not using a meter to monitor this one. This one, we're going to use our ears. Basically, we're going to zero beat the BFO. When I turn the volume up, we should hear a buzz. And there it is. You should be able to hear that. So what we're going to do is I've taken the knob off the BFO. And we're going to turn this. You hear the noise, the, the oscillator getting there, or the tetradyne getting lower. So you probably can't hear that growling very low. Now it's gone completely. And I turned counterclockwise to bring it to zero. If I keep turning counterclockwise, it picks up again. And I go back clockwise. So the trick there is, is to get right between the two. So if you turn left, you get... Heterodyne, you turn right, you get heterodyne. So now that you're in the center, you know you're putting 50 kilohertz with that control right down the middle of the 50 kilohertz IF. So we're going to put the knob on with the little red dot pointed right at 12 o'clock. So you always know when you're at 12 o'clock with the BFO control that your BFO frequency is right down the center of that IF. This is very difficult to do while being on camera at the same time. There we go.
I'm getting fussy now. There we go. Right smack in the middle. Nothing. Clockwise tone. Counterclockwise tone. So there that is. That's our uh, BFO alignment done. Uh, next, we'll be moving on to the RF deck and dial calibration. Okay, the front end or uh, RF deck alignment is uh, a little bit more in depth, but it's easy as long as you follow the manufacturer's instructions and you've got a kind of sort of basic idea of what's going on. We have our 6C4 oscillator tube, and this is the main VFO, your main tuning dial, if you will. Um, and you have the oscillator coils for each of the bands. There are four bands on this radio, so you can see there are four sets of coils. And, and these will control your dial calibration. So when you adjust these coils, you'll bring your dial into calibration. This is what alignment will have you do. So there are two more sets of coils we'll be adjusting. These are the antenna coils. This is the antenna input here. Um, these will give you selectivity. Um, they will tune to the frequency that you desire to hear while help filter out the rest. And you'll pick these up on signal on based on uh, the instructions the manufacturer would give you. The signal then passes through an RF amplifier into another set of coils that feed the mixer. And we'll also be picking these up. So if you can imagine that, um, I believe the first step have you do is on band four and they have you set a signal generator to 30 megahertz and feed the signal in through here through an rma um, uh, type of a dummy load antenna uh, between your signal generator and the radio which i'll post a schematic for that later it's not a big deal or you can use a 300 ohm resistor if you like to feed a signal in um, and they'll have you uh, tune your dial to 30 megahertz and you'll uh, adjust the first coil until you receive a signal exactly on 30 megahertz so your dial is calibrated and then you'll pick up your coil here for best signal through and same with the mixer coil for best signal through and we'll show you how uh, we monitor that or how we how we meter that using a, um, a speaker um, the audio output of the radio is uh, what we monitor to pick up but it's pretty straightforward um, the manufacturer's instructions is good and, and uh, fairly clear. Uh, it will show you, uh, give you a diagram of what capacitors and what coils to peak and when. Um, but it's, like I say, it's fairly straightforward, a little bit more involved than the, uh, than the IF portion of it. But uh, you can get through it. It's really not that hard. It just looks a lot more complicated than it is. So let's take a quick look at it now. Okay, we're set up for our RF deck alignment, which is this area here, and it is divided into three sections. We have our 1650 oscillator slash VFO. This is uh, uh, where dial calibration will be done. This is the input coils to the mixer, and this is the uh, selectivity or the antenna coils. So our setup, is really, I've got a, uh, you, you, know, you have to follow the manufacturer's uh, suggested uh, tuning routine on this. And they have you start on band four, which is the upper band at 30 megahertz. And that's what I have my, our signal generator set to here. We have very simply our Simpsons 260 meter uh, set on uh, AC volts connected to the speaker output. And just so that you can hear the tone, I've connected in the speaker. Uh, directly with the meter so you can hear the tone generated by the signal generator and we will be in this case using a, a 500 hertz tone um, and the order of this is quite simple um, it's going to say in the instructions to put your signal generator on 30 megahertz and tune your dial to 30 megahertz and you'll tune this first capacitor and you can hear it here as I get close to it. 
um, to 30 megahertz so that you can hear the tone exactly at 30 megahertz. So you've calibrated the dial exactly at 30 megahertz. So um, let me just do some demonstrations here to get an idea how sensitive this is. I'm going to put some modulation on now. You can see some deflection on the meter here now. Just to give you an idea of how sensitive this is, and this, you know, I usually go through and I make some basic corrections at this point and get it close, but you don't do your final RF deck alignment until the cabinet's on, and now I'm going to show you why. See, so you just get your hand even near it. Imagine what would happen when you put a piece of metal on top of that. Your, 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 all your calibrations are going to go out. So as per the manufacturer, and, and I won't go through all these bands, I'm just going to very quickly run through the ideology of how this works. Hold on a minute, let's turn this off. Um, I'm just going to quickly go through the ide ideology of how this works. So we're set up at the high end of band four, and we're going to do our dial calibration so that uh, we'll tune that capacitor until we hear that signal exactly at 30 megahertz on the dial. And these are very simply, just peeking up these coils, this one again is the input of the mixer, high side, the high side of this band, same with the antenna coil. So now what they'll have you do then is go down to 14 megahertz, which is the bottom of the same band, and quite possibly, very frequently, your upper band at 30 megahertz, you just put bang on. But at 14 megahertz, it's not on. So what do you do? Well, there are additional adjustments here. And there's a coil here and a coil here that you'll adjust until 14 megahertz is bang on. And then you'll go back to 30 and you'll check it again. And you'll go back between 14 and 30 several times until it's bang on at both ends of the dial of that band. So that's how that's done. Um, I'm just going to very quickly show you uh, the upper end adjustment here. Um, but like I said, I'm not going to go through all this with you because I have to redo this with the case on. So, you know, we've done our 50 kilohertz alignment. We've done 1650 kilohertz alignment. We've done our BFO. And this is really the last uh, front to be done. And it's simple. And using this setup, I should talk a little bit about how I'm coupled in here. Like I said, I'm just connected to the speaker uh, for monitoring peak here. So the, more, the stronger the signal, the more you're going to get a meter deflection. Um, my signal generator I've connected into the antenna lead through what's called an RMA dummy load that I've quickly made up one here in a cable. And it's a very simple thing. I'll post a schematic a little later on in the community section. Very simple to recreate an RMA dummy load. It kind of sort of uh, um, simulates an antenna connected to the unit. So uh, let's just have a quick look and uh, see what we got here. So we put our We've got a little deflection on the meter. So the nice part about this is I, my dial is bang on 30 megahertz, and this is bang on 30 megahertz. I don't have to adjust that first adjuster. So we'll go to the input of the mixer. And we get a little bit there, and we go to the input of the antenna coil. And we get a little bit there. Not not very much. Like I said, I'm not going to bore, bore the pants off you and go through all of this. Um, following the manufacturer's instructions and this 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 setup that I've shown you here will get you where you need to go without an issue. The manufacturer's instructions will tell you what band and what to have all the controls set to, and it will uh, guide you to each adjustment at each different phase. It's again, it looks complicated but it's actually very simple and it, it's quite fruitful. And uh, you really, you know, when you have as much work as done as this radio is done, I just very quickly, like I say, go through at this stage, kind of put it where it needs to be. Um, I do a rough alignment without the case. Then I'll put the case on and I'll go ahead and I'll do a sharp alignment at that point. I think that uh, pretty much covers alignment. This radio has, uh, um, been a very interesting case. It's very hot radio, very, very sensitive. You can do many radios, like I've done many Halicraft or S40 radios, 
And every once in a while, you know, RS section 99s, you'll run across one that's really, really sensitive. It's better than everybody else. Every radio seems to have its own personality. And this one certainly has one as being a sensitive one. So uh, it's it worked out very well. Well, I think that just about buttons it up for this project. I'm going to put the, uh, the cabinet on it eventually, but not right away. And I'll tell you why that is. Um, this receiver has impressed me, and I think I'm going to be using it uh, in my old AM station, I have a, a Johnson's Viking 2 transmitter, and I think I will be using this uh, radio for likely 20 meters and up because it's very, very, very hot radio, very hot receiver. And one thing that it doesn't have that I wish it did have is what's called a crystal calibrator so that I can exactly know where I am in frequency. And it just so happens I discovered a guy on eBay who was selling a crystal calibrator out of an SX100, so I bought it. It's on the way here, and I'm going to attempt, likely going to get it done and install it in this unit. So I'll have a 100 kilohertz step crystal calibrator. So I'm not going to put the covers back on until I get that job done, and maybe I'll make another video about how that all went. But as in so far as restoration, this one's done. Um, it was extremely successful. I'm very impressed with how it operates, and. Um, you know, if anybody's got any questions, by all means, leave them below. Uh, we certainly uh, could use more subscribers. So uh, don't be afraid to click that subscribe button. Don't be afraid to join our Facebook group. And please leave some comments, leave some questions. And uh, we'll get back to you as soon as we can. So until the next one, we'll see you then. From the NBC Newsroom in New York, President Roosevelt said in a statement today that the Japanese have attacked the Pearl Harbor... Hawaii from the air. I'll repeat that. President Roosevelt says that the Japanese have attacked Pearl Harbor in Hawaii from the air. This bulletin came to you from the end.